Hi, and welcome to this introductory video on the Multi-Agent Transport Simulation Toolkit, just MATSIM for short. In this second of a three-part video, we talk about why we chose MATSIM as the modeling tool of choice, especially in the South African context. If you missed the first part, just click on the little figurine, or you can click on the YouTube logo to take you to the playlist containing all of the videos in this series. So what's wrong with the state of practice four-step models, you may ask? Well, yes, they have shortcomings. Are they all bad? No, but I think they've outlived their usefulness. Technology and research has opened up a better way to go about transport planning. Firstly, if we assume the gravity model, that is quite dangerous in South Africa, and I'm sure elsewhere as well. In 1949, our country started seeing the forced relocation of thousands of people to the periphery of the cities. Nearly 20 years into our democracy in South Africa, and we still deal with that legacy. Many of the poorest people still live on the periphery of what is now large metropolitan areas. The gravity model doesn't apply. They don't have the choice and job opportunities close by. Secondly, and probably more critical, is the economic inequality of the population. State of practice models assume a fairly homogeneous population. And that may indeed have been true a few decades ago in many developed nations where these models were established. There is a metric known as the Gini coefficient that expresses the economic inequality in a country. It is indeed not a perfect metric, like many models, but hey, it proves to be useful. Consider this graph that plots on the x-axis the cumulative percentage of the population and on the y-axis the cumulative percentage of the country's wealth. In a perfect economy, we would assume that 50% of the people will own 50% of the country's wealth and 80% of the people will own 80% of the wealth. But we don't live in a perfect world. Rather, we see that 50% of the people may only earn 20% of the wealth and 80% of the people earn only 40% of the country's wealth. This skewness of the graph, or this inequality, is what the Gini coefficient tries to quantify. It calculates the coefficient as the area depicted by A divided by the total area below the graph, which is A plus B. Hence, the Gini coefficient's range is between perfect equality, which is 0%, and 100%, which indicates perfect inequality. So where do you think the different countries in the world lie? 26% we find Austria, Germany, Belgium, Australia, Canada, the UK, India, and China. Note that the Gini coefficient does not give us any indication of the absolute wealth of a country, only the economic inequality, the United States. At 45%, that is an average across all the states. In some cases, it is as low as 30%, and in Atlanta, it's 54-55%. Brazil and South Africa. There are a couple of things in which South Africa is really good, even the best in the world. Unfortunately, being economically unequal is one of them. And many may instantly blame it on apartheid. Well, the truth is that the Gini coefficient has deteriorated significantly since the democratic elections in 1994. So the state of practice models are not a very good representation of reality. It battles to deal with things like economic inequality. It's also not very intuitive. What's the alternative? Meet Joe. He's a normal guy like you and me. And in his head, he's got a few plans. And with a plan, we mean the sequence of activities, the timing of those activities, and the route and mode between each pair of activities. From experience, we build up a small selection of good plans. And here we represent that in that the larger the font, the better we expect that specific plan to perform. And with performance, we mean the playoff between monetary and time cost. Here's Jane. She too has a number of plans that she's contemplating. And, as we know, some people just have more plans in their heads than others. In fact, there is an entire population who each has a bunch of plans in their heads. 
and during any one day, each one picks a single plan for the day and go out and execute it. And what happens? Congestion. So congestion is not the result of some equilibrium assignment, load optimization done on a computer. Rather, congestion results from you and I trying to participate in the economy by traveling around to get to our activities using the same limited road space. We make our own choices. We're not told by some transport modeler where to drive and what mode to use. And this is the essence of agent-based modeling. We model agents and each agent here represents a commuter. An agent makes autonomous decisions but also interacts with other agents and with its environment. If we create an agent in Watertluf or Sandust, chances are that agent will have a much higher income than an agent in Winterfeld or Shoshangove. Does it work? Well, two papers already appeared comparing what happens when you take the same input data and feed it into both a four-step model and an agent-based model, specifically Matsum. And the results? Well, Matsum is indeed slower, nearly double the time. But all right, that means that the entire Gauteng will still model within 48 hours. And seeing that a model might influence decisions worth billions, I think we can wait for the additional 24 hours. On the upside, agent-based models predict travel times more accurately, is much more intuitive to understand and validate, and produce much richer results that you can use to do a lot more different and comprehensive analysis. Are we saying the current guys are just wrong? No, we're not. We're saying we started this five years ago and we think we've done a good job of pulling it apart. From part A in this video, we said that good research is trying to find the solutions now that industry and government will need in five years time. We think it is ready for you guys to take and use to help make better decisions so that we can get this country to where it belongs. Right up there with the best. It certainly is one of the most beautiful and the people deserve much better. That brings us to the end of the second of a three-part introduction to Matsum. In the third part, we give an overview of Matsum and you can click on the little female figurine to go there directly. Click on the little man to go to the first part that deals with the philosophy of modeling. Or click on the YouTube logo to check out all the other videos in this Matsum training series. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm.